You see this problem that I'm showing above? It looks pretty difficult, doesn't it? It's also very difficult to derive, and it explains a very complicated phenomenon of the evolution of dark matter in the universe. Now my point here is that although this problem looks complicated, because it's set up in this beautiful way, it's actually very easy to solve in Python. The problem was actually provided to me by somebody in the Discord server, and I wanna get in the habit more of you guys giving me problems that you're working on in courses or other things, and I show you how to solve it in a very simple way in Python. So definitely be sure to join that Discord server, like and subscribe, and enjoy. Even though this equation looks quite complicated, it's very few packages we need to solve this equation. We need NumPy, of course, for all the arrays. Um, Scipy.special, this is the Bessel function I'm importing. I'm importing a function that will take an integral here, the, of course, shows up here. Uh, a function that will actually solve the differential equation, solve IVP, and then a little bit of plotting stuff as well. So our problem essentially looks like this. We have dy dx is equal to some complicated looking function with a bunch of different parameters, and we wanna solve y as a function of x. And so you might think, well, what are y and x? Well, y is related to the density of dark matter particles in the universe. Again, I don't wanna to get too much into the theory. Uh, and x is inversely proportional to the temperature, so it's proportional to time. Of course, as time goes on in the universe, the temperature decreases. So you can think as x gets larger, that's like simulating time evolution of the universe. Then we have some complicated looking expression here on the right, and we'll define what these functions mean in a second. Um, but you can see what's most important to sort of note is that x shows up here, it's just the factor x. Um, then we have a function that's a function of x and m. We have this integral here, which is integrated over s. So s is not a parameter in this differential equation. It's a parameter of integration. So it's not a function of s, this whole thing. Um, but x shows up here in the Bessel function here. So we take this integral. Uh, so this whole thing in the square brackets is also some other function of x. And then we have y squared. Of course, y is the um, depend variable in this differential equation. And then y not squared, which is a function of both x and m. So the goal here is that we wanna solve this differential equation as a function of x, so y is a function of x, and we'll do it for different values of m. So I sort of went over this briefly, but the real interpretation here is that y, which is the thing we're solving for, is the number density of dark matter particles in the universe, you can think of you know how many there are, per unit entropy, that's important. Because of course, as the universe expands, you know, there's less stuff going on. And so we're not interested really in the density just in general because things spread out. But if you consider it per unit entropy, it says like how much stuff is going on, how many dark matter particles are in that sort of location. And X is equal to M over T. I haven't really defined what those are. M is the dark matter mass parameter. So we're gonna solve it for a bunch of different values of M and you know, that, that says, how does the dark matter mass parameter affect the evolution of the number density? And uh, more importantly, it's divided by T. So T is the temperature of the surroundings. So as X increases, you can think of the temperature as decreasing, universe is getting colder and expanding. So on the right hand side here, I'll just keep track of all the functions and constants that we need. So the first thing we need is to define these constants here, and that's easy enough. So I have them here, I can run this, and this is just basically the values that are specified here. So the next thing I need to do is define all the functions that I've specified here. Now you can see, and this is especially important in research, the way I've defined the functions makes it very easy to define in Python as well. I specified exactly what arguments are gonna be taken into each function, sigma, why not, any q. So all I really need to do is convert these to Python code. So here I have the functions written here, basically written exactly as they are here in Python. Uh, why not is a function of X and M and these functions here, they're not defined yet, but then I define them below uh, any Q and S, same parameters as everything here, same with F and H. Uh, now we need to define Sigma. Sigma will take an S, M and Lambda. Again, that's easy enough, S, M and Lambda. Uh, rather than sort of write this all out as one expression, I'll define x1 as this first little part, x2 is the next part, x3 is this fraction, and x4 as this fraction. The next part is actually defining the integrand here because I'll feed in this integrand function into a quad function where I integrate from 4m squared to infinity. So the integrand is just sigma of s, m, and lambda times the square root of s, which I have here, 
times this Bessel function, kn, it's order one, so I put a one here, and the argument it takes is x squared root s over m, which is exactly what I have here. So then it's really easy to define dy dx. Now this dy dx function we're going to be using with a ODE solver called solve IVP. So we need to define this function in a very specific way. It needs to take in x, the independent variable here, or the variable that y is a function of, as the first argument. It will take in capital Y as the second argument. Of course, this ODE also depends on capital Y itself. And then any additional parameters it will take in afterwards. So I can define my function. It takes in little x, a capital Y. So these are the independent and dependent variable. And then m and lambda are the things that we can change and you know solve it for different values of m and lambda. So the first thing I'm going to do is define the thing that's in square brackets. That's just integral. I use the quad function of um, scipy here. I feed in the integrand function that I defined above. I integrate from 4m squared to infinity. So look closely at how this function is defined. And because the integrand function also takes an x, m, and lambda, remember the function we're integrating over is s, but there's other you know, parameters here that you know, the integrand depends on. So when I call the quad function, I give those as additional arguments here, x, m, and lambda. Now the quad function will return both the value of the integral and an estimation of the error uh, as a tuple. So I just take the first element here, which is just the value of the integral. Then I basically write this equation exactly how it's written. I have minus x times f of x, m, the function I've defined above. I multiplied by the integral, which is here, times y squared minus y naught of x, m squared. And so you can see the importance of setting up this problem like I do on the right. If I write it in a mathematical notation, that's very easy to copy directly over to Python, where I basically name the functions exactly how they're written here. It's very easy not to make mistakes. Uh, but before solving, I think it's sort of worth looking into uh, exploring this function, why not? Remember, why not is the equilibrium. So that's assuming that everything is at the same temperature. Um, distribution of the dark matter density per unit entropy. So how much dark matter there is relative to everything else. And so I want to look at that as a function of x. So what happens is the temperature decreases in the universe, right? As things spread out, temperature decreases. What's happening to the dark matter according to this model? For that, I'm just going to let x go from 1 to 100. So it's going to get larger, which means the temperature is getting smaller. And I'll just plug in these values of x and different values of m into the function to see, well, what happens to the amount of dark matter in the universe. So I can plot x versus y naught. Here's the value m equals 3. And I give my labels and stuff. I'll use semi-log axes. And you can see that as the time goes on, or as the temperature gets smaller and x gets larger, you can see that the amount of dark matter rapidly decreases. So there's a lot of dark matter early on in the universe, and then it rapidly decays. Now what's interesting is that it actually doesn't depend on the dark matter mass parameter. If I do this for, you know, y m equals, if I do this for m equals seven as well, so let me plot this over top. So I've done it for m equals three, now for m equals seven, you could see that the curves are basically on top of each other. So there's no dependence on the dark matter mass parameter for the equilibrium concentration. But in terms of the dynamics of the system, it absolutely does depend on the mass parameter. So now let's actually define a function that allows us to get the solution to the real dynamics of the system. We'll assume that all the matter in the universe is in thermal equilibrium to start, and we'll see how the concentration of dark matter changes as the universe cools. So the function looks like this. We're gonna, it's just going to return y. It will take in the parameters of the system, m and lambda, and it will take in span. And span is just a tuple, contains the first x point and the last x point. So it's just you know, what range of x values we're solving the differential equation over. So the first thing to note is that this solve IVP function, I can look at it sort of on its own. I give in dy dx, which is the function that specifies the differential equation that I defined above here. Um, I'm going to give the span, these are the x values. So let's solve it between x equals one and 100. Um, the initial value of y, so that's the initial concentration of dark matter. Uh, I'm gonna set this to y not at, at a value of, um, one, so that's the initial x value. And let's say uh, m equals three. And then we'll have m equals three here, and lambda is one times 10 to the negative five. So here we can actually solve the differential equation that we have. And I can let it run, it takes about seven or eight seconds, I believe. And it says that it successfully reached the end, and it gives the t values, which are really the x values. Solve IVP gives the independent variable 
called t, but really in our case, that's x. Um, and then it also gives the values of the differential equation, so capital Y here. So all this function does is it takes in the parameter m and lambda and the time span, it gets the result, and then it returns result.t, which is sort of the um, x thing that we'll plot, and result.y. Um, you can see that this is actually a 2D array because this function is meant to solve multi-dimensional differential equations. This is a one-dimensional differential equation. So really, we just want the first element here. And this returns all the information we need. So we have this function where we can solve the dynamics of the system for different dark matter mass parameters and different values of lambda. So now we can actually solve this equation for different values of m. So here's uh, five different solutions, for example. The first time, we'll solve it for m equals 3. And we'll use the same value of lambda each time. Uh, each time going from x goes from 1 to 100. So m equals 3, 4, 6, 7, and 15. And we can see how the dynamics of the system change, or how does the concentration, the, the real concentration of dark matter in the universe change as the temperature decreases and the universe expands. So we'll solve it five different times. That doesn't take very long. And then we can plot it pretty easily as well. So we'll plot all five solutions next to each other. Um, and you can see that it was very easy to solve this complicated looking problem in Python. Um, for the interpretation here, you can see m equals 3, obviously the concentration of dark matter per unit entropy or per what's going on in a given location in space. It uh, decreases over time. As the um, dark matter mass parameter initially increases, you can see that it becomes less and less, so m equals 4, m equals 6. Uh, then as the mass parameter gets large enough, you can see that while well, m equals 6 to 7, it actually is larger than m equals 3, so it goes down and then it goes back up. And m equals 15, well, it doesn't really decay much at all. So this mass parameter really determines how much dark matter is going to be left in the universe as things expand and as the universe cools. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it shows how easy it is to solve a complicated looking problem in Python. Be sure to check out the Discord server and provide your own problems that you want me to solve. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.